We're going to talk with uh, talk about affordable Aratown homes right now uh, because a press release has just dropped and they're going to start Earthworks later this month, actually. And I want to find out uh, a bit more about this uh, because it's always an issue uh, that attracts interest, uh, not surprisingly, because it's something we really need. So we're going to chat with uh, the... Um, uh, the I'm just going to get her correct title. The executive officer of the um, of the affordable of the Queenstown Lakes Community Housing Trust, which is QLCHT. It's a long-winded one, that one. And Julie should be on the line right now. Hi, Julie. Hi, Leanne. How are you today? <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, and thanks for doing this uh, at short, <laughs> extremely short notice. But it just dropped okay. dropped in my email, and I thought, oh, yeah, good subject. So. Arrowtown. Uh, now, you know, a, lot, a lot's been made of Queenstown affordable housing, but perhaps not so much has been happening in the Arrowtown area. Yeah, that's right. Well, we, we did actually build a development which we completed probably about seven years ago in Suffolk Street next to the Jack Reed Park there. Um, that was a smaller development of 10 homes on land that we received from QLDC. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a few years, but we're very excited to be back and building something of significance and um, certainly this is the largest pro- project that we've ever built um, in, across the district. Oh, okay. Well, that is significant. So you've, how, how much land is involved and how many properties will, will be built? So it's about 3.7 hectares. It's on Jop Street. So it's right at the end of Arrowtown as you're heading out towards the uh, our junction there and we've got the golf course the Aratown Golf Club on both sides on two sides we've got Jop Street obviously on one side and then the Arrow River on the on the other side so it's a, it's a magical little spot there and we're going to be building 68 homes Oh that's 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 great isn't it yes and I know Jop Street and it's it's really close to the river so it's quite scenic isn't it yeah, yeah, it is, and we're, we're obviously the plan will be to um, clear. There's a bit of scrub and broom and things in there at the moment, so mm. we'll clear all that, and we're creating some pocket parks so people within the development, even if they live further back towards the um, higher end of the golf club, they'll still be able to walk through the pocket parks from their house and access the river quite easily. Oh, that's fantastic. I liked what Jim Bolt said in this release, the Mayor, and he said that uh, access to affordable housing has a direct link to community well-being. I guess we should never forget that. Yeah, and it's so true because, I mean, we all know that access to affordable and safe and decent quality housing affects your personal well-being, right? But in turn, if um, there's a significant number of people in the community that have poor well-being, then that starts to affect community well-being. So therefore, you know, the more people that we can help into good, secure, affordable housing, the the greater the outcome is for the community. You know, I talked to the um, local principal there at Arrowtown School and he's um, he's really excited about it. He said, you know, attracting and retaining teachers has always been an issue for us and we'll be able to work with him on that. We'll be able to mm. prioritise teachers for the Arrowtown School and obviously for families, you know, they've seen over the last few years, they have seen a bit of a, at times, a drop in the role because of families being unable to stay in Arrowtown because of the affordability factor. So being able to bring those families back to Arrowtown and so close to the school as well and we're putting in a little footpath up up Jop Street so that kids will be able to go straight from their home up the um, established footpath and then along a centennial way to the school, all nice and safe. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I know that, um, yes, getting teaching staff has, has been an issue and... Yeah, this sounds really good. Now, I guess, so there, is there a whole different variety of homes, like, or, you know, all sorts of different sizes available? Yeah, built? that's right. There'll be a, a really good mix. So we're doing, I think we've got about H1 bedders um, with a, a particular focus for prioritising seniors, so that's 65 plus age group. And then we've got a good mix of two, three and four bedders. So we'll be looking to help, you know, not just families. Obviously, we're, we're there is always a, a strong focus on families for us, but there's also singles and couples out there who don't need a three or four bed home. So yeah, we want to cater to a wide variety of households on our waiting list, which is actually reflective of our, our waiting list. We have a, a really wide variety of um, households there with different demographics. Mm. When do you... Okay, so when 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 is the first sod actually going to be turned? Well, Jim and... 
uh, Jim Bolt and our Deputy Chair Joe Conroy turned that first sod of soil last Monday, so a week ago. So officially, that, I guess you'd say it's that underway. was our official first sod. <laughs> yeah. But um, in terms of actual earthworks, I think we've got uh, arborists coming onto the site next Monday and then it'll be a week or two after that we'll start with the um, earthwork contractors. So certainly this month is the plan. Right. Okay. And then, and, and realistically, <laughs> how soon yeah. could could we see um, you know the first houses actually being finished? So at the moment, our program has scheduled for the first lot of houses start, starting to be complete around January 2025, and then it will be a stage completion all the way through 2025 through to December. So that's the plan at the moment. Realistically, we're still a couple of years away from getting people into homes. There's a huge amount of work to go, as you can imagine, in mm. terms of um, the, the civil works and getting the site up uh, up and ready before we even start building. But we're, you know, we're hoping to start construction halfway through next year. So yeah, it's a, it's a big project, as I said, but um, it's really exciting. Mm. With, you know, the demands on the construction industry and, the num- and, and you know, it's really hard to get, um, get things done, isn't it? Are, do, are you impacted by that or can you somehow fast track, you know, builders and things because this is a priority? Um, I, w- I don't think we have any special privileges in terms of fast tracking builders. We're very much in the um, commercial market when it comes to um, procuring builders. However, we do have some really good established relationships in place with um, some some builders, and I think over the years, and um, they've you know we're we're a pretty good client to work for, and um, at the same time, we've got a big pipeline of work coming through to us. So this is just one project. We've got a heap of other stuff in the pipeline. So I think that um, we are well supported by local builders. Yeah, well, that's good, isn't it? And and there's nothing like being there and, uh, and doing something for the community. There's this goodwill, isn't there? Because, I mean, got to remind people that your organisation is not for profit and it's a social enterprise, you know, and it's, uh, well, it's, you know, it's for community health and, and well-being, as, as Jim Bolt says. Yeah, that that's right. And look, we try and prioritise um, local contractors where we can. But I mean, on on occasion, we do have to go outside of the Arrowtown or even um, perhaps Queenstown to to get a contractor. But um, where we can, we certainly like to prioritise local and keep those funds flowing at a local level. Mm. I mean, when you think of it, houses in Arrowtown lately, I mean, Queenstown has bucked the trend in terms of uh, not suffering a, a real estate price drop, really, even through all this mayhem that we've been living through. And so mm. you think of it for, for families, you know, to actually live in a, in a, in a beautiful community because it is a, a great place, a safe, uh, great community near to a school. It's going to be fantastic for young families, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. And so we're looking, I don't know if I mentioned, but we're looking to obviously as well put in a number of different programs. So across those 68 homes, we'll have a number in in senior housing, um, quite a, I I think, potentially up to 65, 70% of the homes will be in our assisted ownership model. That's a secure home program. And then the rest will be a split of rentals and that might be affordable rental or a rent to buy program or public housing rental. So we've got lots of options there for people as well. Mm. I guess, um, you know, we're coming up to local body elections, Julie, and uh, I guess you're going to miss Jim Bolt in in some ways. I mean, I don't want to get political and ask you to sort of take sides or comment on his his mayoralty, but he he certainly seems to be very committed to this and the council's done a lot to help with affordable housing. Yes, yeah, I'd absolutely support um, those words. Jim's been um, an incredible supporter of the trust over his two terms, the last six years, he's got a number of things off the ground which has been, um, for us, have been stagnating for some time and this project was one of them, getting that land transferred across to the trust. Actually, conversation started with a previous council probably about 12 years ago, so it was um, it was this current council and Jim that got it over the line. So, great supporter of the trust and, um, yeah, we will miss him and we will miss a lot of those other councillors around the table, you know, another really strong advocate for our trust was John McDonald who left um, because of health, for health reasons a year or so ago. Mm. But look, you know, I think I've been doing rounds talking to um, other mayoral candidates and councillor candidates and I think people really understand that affordable community housing is a critical 
um, is of critical importance for our district and I think most of them are really supportive of the trust so it's just a case of working with those next ones that come in and making sure they yeah keep uh, up the work signed up to the yeah signed up to the philosophy behind the trust and what we're all about which is you know helping attract and retain key workers and important people within our community. Mm, no, well said, Julie. And uh, been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks so much for your time today. That's brilliant. Thanks, Leanne. Take Bye. care. That's Julie Hughes, the Executive Officer from the Queenstown Lakes Community Housing Trust.